Thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion Review. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I'm going to be talking to you for part two of The Defeat of the Beast of the Battle at Armageddon. And it's coming from my book under the new title, Fight, and God Will Bring You Victory. And uh, my name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I'm the author of the book, and it's available on Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, and Lulu.com, in ebook and in print, in ebook and in paperback. Okay, now we're going to continue with part two. Okay, uh, thank you for joining me today. Now, a war started in heaven, and now the people of earth are included in that war. I think I may have mentioned that. How could Satan think that he could ever win a war against God? Okay? Uh, he can't. He can't. He never could win. He thought he could, but he couldn't. You know, but God did not create Satan, Lucifer, to be evil. It was something that Lucifer had just decided within himself that he wanted to try to take over heaven. I guess he just was studying God and whatnot and trying to figure out how he was doing things. And he decided to say, well, hey, I want to I wanna do this. If he can do it, it looks easy, you know. Uh, but see, he, he had to realize that Lucifer was not divine. God is divine. So God is the only one, including Jesus Christ, who can do what he do. You see what I'm saying? God gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of praise for heaviness. So he, God replaces all of the negative with the positive. You see, if you're not a Christian, you're going to, uh, you know, the demons are going to attack you, they're going to be attached to you, and, you know, they may, you may be able to get them off of you, but you won't be able to get them off without being, uh, uh, you know, without being affected. You see what I'm saying? Uh, for a child of God, it's not that way. You know, if you stay in the will of God, you don't have to worry about the demons attacking you because God protects us. Christians, he always makes a way of escape for his children. And he's not going to let the demons attack. Okay? He's not going to let us go down without a fight. Okay? So Satan has attacked God and his, and his government in getting Eve to sin. Satan specifically got Eve to distrust God. She was led to believe that God was holding back what should have been hers. Okay, as I said before, you will see that Satan must have used the same kind of attack on his angels in heaven, and you will be looking at what the Bible says about Satan's war against God and mankind. Now, it appears that Satan is waging a legal war. You must wonder why Satan could figure out if he could take win a war against God, the creator of all things. God is a true God, the creator of all things, so how could Satan and his evil angels think that they could attack God and win? Especially when even thinking of God, they tremble. But the Lord, the God, but, the, but our Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. Thus you shall say to them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under those heavens. Okay, he has made the earth by his power, he has established the world by his wisdom, and he has stretched out the heavens in, at his discretion. Jeremiah 10, 10 to 12. If you are tempted to think that the above text concerns those who have not made the heavens and the earth, it's just speaking of the idols themselves, made of stone and wood. The Bible itself sets you straight on the issue, it says that when you worship idols, uh, you are really worshiping the evil angels that the idols represent, which are demons. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods, uh, with abominations. Okay, they provoked him to anger. Uh, they sacrificed the demons not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals, and their fathers did not fear. Deuteronomy 32, 16, 17. Okay, Satan and his evil angels have already lost the war. 
Okay, they just didn't know it. You can even see the reaction of various demons, which demonstrate that they themselves know that they have lost the war. You know, but they still go forth anyway and continue to fight. Even though they know in their head, they probably figure, oh, I know, you know, they know that they lost, but they want to see if you know they lost. So they're going to keep fighting, thinking that you don't know that they lost. You see what I'm saying? It's all psycho psychological. And also in the Lord's Prayer, you have another indi indication that things that happen on the earth are not according to God's will. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 9 to 10, In this manner, therefore, pray your Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is your choice. You can either choose the narrow way that is difficult and be saved, or you can choose the broad way which leads to destruction which appears to be enticing. Let's strive to be followers of Christ and do His will so that you can be blessed and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Now, did you... Okay. Now, we're under spiritual attack. Did you know that? And if you didn't know, I'm telling you now. We're under spiritual attack. In 2 Timothy 4.18, it says, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly he kingdom. We are under spiritual attack. That's why you have to fight so hard. And that's why the enemy is constantly coming against you with such hatred. Your giants know that you are anointed and blessed and highly favored of God. And since Satan hates God, he also hates God's people. Satan is going to come against you harder because you, are, because you live in a sinful world. Okay, the world is full of sin. We were born in sin. Satan is operating in his own territory. Since he is a liar, and since he is evil, and the world is full of sin and evil, okay? Uh, we, we believers stand out in the crowd because there are only a few of you true believers. There are a lot of people in church, but only a few believers. Okay, so Satan uses the evil and wicked people of the world to try to lure you into his world through them. Okay? Remember, the devil goes to and fro this, uh, day and night to see whom he may devour. Don't take it personal, baby. It's the devil's job. So every chance he gets, the devil is going to pounce on you. And the more anointed you are, the harder the devil will come against you, and the harder you must fight. And as I said before, you must not be able, you may not be able to eliminate sin but you can contain it and be its master. Okay, and that's a choice that you make. And since Satan is a spirit, you can tell it to go and flee, and it must obey. Why? Because Jesus is at the right hand of God, we sit at the right hand of Jesus, and the devil is under our feet. So we must obey Jesus, Jesus must obey God, and the devil must obey us. Okay? So since, uh, and, and since uh, Satan is a spirit, you know, every time the devil shows his ugly face, you must cast him out again and again and again. Let him know that you mean business. The first thing to do when you think uh, you're under attack is to figure out whether uh, what you're going through is a spiritual attack from demonic forces or if you're reaping the rewards of your own sin. Now, don't blame every spiritual attack or everything that happens to you on this demonic force. Or are you taking responsibility for your actions? Okay, you have to realize, are you suffering as a slave to righteousness for doing what's right in the sight of God, God being pleased with you? Or are you doing? Are you suffering for, as a slave to sin for doing what's wrong in the sight of God, God being displeased with you, therefore bringing your own sin upon you when you suffer as a slave to sin? Okay, that's what I mean when I say taking responsibility for your actions. You also have to come out from among them. Anybody in the family who's sinning, they got to change from their wicked and evil ways or y'all got to separate and come part ways. Okay, do not sit in the seat of the scornful, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that includes family members too. Or as I call them, blood-related relatives. Now we know to put a full armor of God on Do you think that what you are going through is from an evil spirit or a sin you have committed. Waging war against your giants is a similar manner in either situation. 
you have to figure that out. Okay, now, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 is an important scripture because this is the key to battling wits with your giants, okay, with the devil. The scripture starts out by saying, be strong and in the Lord, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. When Satan tempted Jesus, he attacked Satan with the word of God. His words were appropriate for the situation, but even if you don't have the right scripture for the occasion, use a scripture, any scripture. Nevertheless, because it is still God's word and it will have a similar effect. You don't know from day to day what type of attack you will be going through or what you will experience, but you know you're going to experience an attack. The enemy comes at you in different ways on different days. <laughs> Nevertheless, he will continue to come after you. If you knew how you were going to be attacked by your giants, you could prepare yourself with the right scripture. But since you don't, you have to study the entire word of God. If you know what the word of God has to say about your situation, that is also helpful. So now you must have a relationship with Christ for your words to take root or have the power or authority given by God to you. Okay? Uh, otherwise, demonic spirits can jump on you anytime, like I said, uh, they get ready. Uh, you may escape these demonic spirits, but you won't escape unharmed. According to the scriptures, God allows Satan a certain amount of freedom, but Satan, will mu Satan still must ask God's permission before Satan can do anything to a believer. Not so with non-believers. If God allows Satan to attack the believer, it is for a divine and perfect purpose. Usually, it's to move you into your next level of anointing, not to bring you down or get you discouraged. Remember it says in the Bible that God came to heal, uh, you know, not to destroy. Okay, he came to give us life and life more abundantly. The situation can go either way depending on whose report you believe. If you allow Satan to discourage you, he has won. If you trust and believe in God's word, your giant will be defeated this time. Satan uses the ungodly world, which he controls, 1 John 5, 19, to stir up fleshly lusts within you that tempt you to sin. Satan uses uh, non-believers to deceive you with worldly wisdom, opposed to God's truth. Satan uses false Christians to try to mislead you into a false gospel centered on a false God. Don't let him convince you. Don't let the devil convince you to believe in false gods. However, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The Bible tells us that. So Satan makes suggestions to you today to doubt God's word. God's word goes forth and does not come back void it accomplishes what it was sent out to do. If God said it, if God said you're going to die, if you eat that apple, then that's what's going to happen. If you're going to eat the apple anyway, you know, then you're going to die. Satan is the father of lies. Satan is a liar, okay? Nothing that come out of his mouth is the truth, okay? But his voice always appears to be louder than God's voice because we listen to it more. We give it more attention. We give it more credibility than the Word of God, okay? There's nothing truthful about Satan or his followers. If you lie, you sin. If you sin, you lie. Satan fabricates everything to appear like a giant to us. Whatever is not the Word of God being a lie, there are people who habitually lie. No matter how hard they try to, they try to tell the truth, they can't. Well, just won't tell the truth because they're so used to lying and getting what they want through lies. They lie to get attention, but some people honestly uh, want to know how they can stop lying and learn how to stop believing lies. That's just like a person who steals. I call him a kleptomaniac. You know, you got people who steal and they figure, hey, stealing gets me what I want. Let me keep on doing it. You know, and they just get so used to stealing and whatnot. Now they study people and see if they're watching them and looking. You know, and then when they got to open and they try to steal, not knowing that eventually you won't get caught. Recognize a lie when you hear one. Listen for clues when people talk. Watch their body language and especially their eye movement. But the main thing is that when God gives us a mind of discernment, go and think about it first. Don't take action right then and there. I always tell people when they're ready to buy a house, 
you know, think of them, think about it, take the contract, look it over, have your lawyer look it over. You're going to have to get a lawyer, you know, look it over and then make a decision what you want. Because a house, when you see a house, I mean, it's all fabulous. Most of the time, it's just so fascinating, you know, first time home buyers, and they want everything right then and there. They're ready to sign. No, you have to get a lawyer, and you must look the contract over because, you know, and have it explained to you so that you'll know what you're getting into. Because a house is a responsibility, just like serving God is a responsibility. Being on the battlefield is a responsibility. Having power and authority is a responsibility, okay? Fighting this fight of faith is a responsibility. If the person cannot keep eye contact with you, they're probably lying, not all the time, but sometimes. Some people are shy and they can't always look you in the eye, you know. Uh, but knowing that God's word is truth and everything that God stands for is true, you worship God in spirit and in truth. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay? Now, can you learn to be so devoted to God that you show reverence to his word? If someone comes in your face and tells you anything uh, to uh, that contrary to the words of God, Send them on their way with a quickness, but not without quoting a scripture first. We are to proclaim the gospel to the people, no matter how much persecution you receive. Do not let your faith waver, no matter how fiercely you are attacked by the enemy. Your ultimate defense mechanism is the assurance that you have in your salvation, your God and yourself. Our heavenly Father, of our heavenly offensive weapon is found in the Word of God, prayer, and in prayer. Jesus is your ultimate example when it comes to fighting off spiritual attacks. Okay, remember how Jesus handled direct attacks from Satan when he was tempted? He, what did he say? It is written. And then he's quoted the scripture, the appropriate scripture. Okay, like I said, if you don't remember this, that exact scripture, get a scripture, any scripture, and quote it. Because God's Word goes forth, doesn't come back void, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Now in 1 Corinthians 4.20 it says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Uh, Jesus has all power over Satan and giants. The power that Satan has is what God allows him to have. No more than that. However, something else happens, something else seems to be happening, because Jesus does not allow Satan to tempt or harass Job in trying to destroy him. Remember the story? That seems to be clear in the scripture. But why does God allow Satan to destroy Job? Obviously the war is still going on and Job's worship of God must be tested. But I had found a couple of things that I had mentioned before. One of them was fear. Okay, uh, the, Job had said the thing that he had feared the most had finally come upon him. Okay, and then what happened? Then God gave the devil permission to take everything that Job had except his soul. So Job had been living in habitual fear. He was like just, just scared all the time, scared that his money was going to be taken away from him. And fear is the opposite of faith. So that's one thing that I have found that he actually said direct. He said the one thing that he had feared had come upon him, you know, and I was paraphrasing so he, had, he was scared all along that his money was going to be taken, and what happened? His money was taken because he was scared of it. He had prophesied over that through his fear. Okay, if he had had faith in it, then he should have been prophesying that over the fear. And then that would have overridden any fear that he would have had. And it would have had. It doesn't mean that he wouldn't have been tested. Okay, but it would have been a different reason behind it. And perhaps maybe different circumstances surrounding it. Okay. Now, I believe that if everything had been done at the cross, then evil would have been destroyed at all uh, 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 at that time. Okay, if the battle was won at the cross, why was uh, not Satan thrown out at that time? Okay, but it's not. God is still allowing Satan to destroy people at their decision making. It's their choice to be destroyed. Remember, we have the power over good and evil. God gives us that power through his strength. Okay, it's not through us that we, you know, it's not our power and our strength that allows us to get through day to day. It's the power of God. He keeps the demons off of us and he gives us his strength to fight them. Okay, so God is still allowing Satan to destroy people. Evil is being propagated in today. Okay, conditions are getting worse, not better. 
it should be obvious that everything is not finished at the cross. However, the believers are not affected. Okay, if you read what happened uh, when uh, Moses went to, to, to uh, deliver the people out of uh, bondage and into the promised land, there was a situation where the locust or one of the animals here, the Israelites was on the cross the street and on the other street, the, the people were being destroyed and the Israelites weren't being affected. Okay, that's the power of God and that's what happens with Christians. You're not going to be touched. Okay, the enemy's going to try to destroy you in many different ways. But a child of God will not be moved, baby, in the name of Jesus. Okay? Um, if both God and Satan do not claim your world, uh, there would be no war. But it's clear the scripture that there is indeed a battle for your world. There is a battle for the mind, and it's still going on. It's not finished. Okay? And it won't be finished until you go to heaven to be with the Lord. Just like the devil will not start going to and fro to see who he can devour until you go to be with the Lord. It's a constant fight, a constant battle, all the time, all day and all night, okay? Even when you're sleeping, there's a battle. Okay, when, when Jesus died, he paid the ultimate price for me and for you. However, uh, that was not the only time that Jesus is going to say, it is finished. I believe that the cross was one step, one big step in the process. But there are other steps that are indicated in Scripture as well. Look at the following scripture. There is a seventh angel, okay, uh, poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple heaven from the throne saying, It is done. Revelation 16, 17. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Revelation 21, 6. Okay, now notice what happens when the uh, seventh angel sounds his trumpet. It is at that time and not before that the world becomes fully kingdom, fully the kingdom of the Lord of Jesus Christ. So at the anointed time, the end will come, the revelation you find that this appointed time is when the seventh angel sounds. Okay, so when the seventh angel sounds, when uh, which is yet future, it is then and only then that the mystery of God will be at, at an end and God and his son Jesus will begin to reign over all the kingdoms of the earth. Satan will quickly lose all his power to continue the torture of God's creatures, uh, creations. God will at that time will begin to set things back to the way they should be without sin and destruction and the righteous will be taken up to be with Christ. We must not forget the book of Revelation, uh, which I'll talk about in the next uh, there's another chapter, I'll be talking about that, uh, which, you, uh, which you study what Jesus does for you to save you, okay? Uh, because the last book of the Bible has so much of information uh, that you have of Jesus Christ, I think you only have a partial gospel which you leave out what Revelation has to say, and you know the book of Revelation has a longer life, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. God is all-powerful. God cannot just zap people out of existence or change their memory, etc., because that would go against his goal of having his creations with free choice. From the Bible, you see that it goes against what God wishes to do. It will go against God's own value system because he is merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, Exodus 34, 6. On the other hand, if, if it is Satan who forces others to follow and serve him. Okay, Satan don't try, he don't want to give you a choice. When people are possessed, they no longer have the will to leave Satan behind. Satan takes control of them and he will never let them go until you're prayed over. You have to have an exorcism to get Satan off your back. Okay, not if you, and not if you can help it. He's not going to let you go if you can help it. Okay, you also see that Satan tries to either trick you or he will use fear to force people into serving him. In addition, you find that when Satan cannot get a person to follow him, he will want to try to kill you. Okay, that's what he goes. He goes around to and fro to see who he can devour. The loss of the righteous among the wicked in today's world often seems like something to worry about. However, it's actually the mercy of God that allows the righteous to rest in peace. Praise be the name of the Lord. 
The righteous person is taken away from the evil of the world, but he will one day arise again when Jesus comes. And the next verse adds to the idea of God's mercy found in Isaiah 26, 19 to 21. Ooh, this is really, in this chapter is interesting. I can make a book out of this. So, I mean, it's just, you know, so interesting. So Satan has been successful in the past in disrupting God's desire for mankind on every level in some degree. Well, not every level, on some level. We're not going to give him that much credit. But why wouldn't this supernatural monster have an influence in what is in the Bible that would confuse God's love and character? Why is the Bible exempt? When God's precious creations are not, makes no sense. In the end, the, Satan, the saints win, but it comes at a high price. Billions and billions of people going to eternal hell. You ever notice these thriller pictures that battle the devil against the angels? And in the end, God always, God's word always wins, and the devil always loses. Okay, I wouldn't suggest that you watch too many of them pictures, because it can vex your spirit. Okay? But we need to uh, definitely be aware, you know, of everything and just have faith that we are going to be able to fight the good fight of faith and win every time. Like I said, fighting is the key to winning a battle over any war or battle against the devil. So I'm going to ask you to join me next time. My name is Sylvia Black. And I'll ask you to holler at the sister. Okay, I'm asking you to holler at the sister. I'll see you next time. We're going to talk about more topics on my new book. Fight and God will bring you victory. All right, sister, peace out.